Is your idea worth selling? <sighs> you see a problem. You know for sure <laughs> that you can solve it. You are a social entrepreneur. You are a thinker. You do your research. You ask the questions. You know that when inspiration strikes, it is your turn to grab it, right? It's as if it comes from the heavens above. The muses have come and whispered in your ear, and you know that you have a greener, better, healthier way to do this. Whatever this may be your idea in your heart, it will change everything. The way that you put it together, that special way right now that you see it, you know, it will literally be like fireworks, everyone, except that isn't. And this, dun, 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 is resistance. In the town of resistance is where all great social entrepreneurs, ideas, creative, artistic, meaningful changes that can make our world a better place, this is where they come to die. And we can mourn or we can do something in return. And so what is that thing? There is this one tool, there is a weapon that can help you fight the war of resistance. Now, it has been deployed throughout history. And when I tell it to you, you might say, aha, I have heard of this weapon. However, most social entrepreneurs, artists, and creatives are nervous to pull this weapon out of the armory because they feel that their passion, that thing, that spark that initially gave them the muse might not follow. Now, to tell you about this weapon, I'm going to need to tell you a little story about the Hessian soldiers. So the Hessians were from the region of Germany called Hesse Kassel, and the king decided to create this amazing militia of mercenaries for money. And around the world, globally, for generations, they were able to be hired and deployed to win and wage the wars that were meant to be for the good of the people. Just like the social entrepreneur, just like that passion, that idea that you have for the better, to make life better, to fight the resistance. Right? Well, the Hessians, they have something. They have this tool. They're not afraid to use it. See, they don't care about the politics of one country over another. They're not concerned with the details. They were hired to do a job. They were ready to do it. They deployed and they did it. Now, I know this tool personally. For 20 years as a sales professional, I was the face. I had the body armor, square jaw, hands on hips. Man, we had the hero stance. For billion dollar companies deploying a revolution for the technical world, armies of my sales teams. I said, come on, let's go, and we did. Armies of sales teams deployed against the resistance of our clients' competitors, and we were able to do it too, just like the Hessians, because you see, it wasn't our idea. It wasn't our product. It wasn't us. It wasn't our baby. Like the way we look at our babies. That is how we feel about that idea that we have that will change the world. But it's because we have that feeling that it makes it nearly impossible for us to deploy this weapon against that resistance. That weapon is indifference. And even with indifference, we can still get overwhelmed. Overwhelmed to the point where we absolutely freeze like stone. The idea was there, the research was there, everything lined up exactly as we anticipated, except we cannot move. <laughs> There's a problem, Houston. I cannot move. What 
do we do? See, overwhelm and feeling that fear, not being able to deploy that one weapon out of the armory that you know will fight the resistance and win the war to get that earth-changing, bettering solution to all who need it, it goes deep. It goes DNA deep. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this enemy, it is called tribal shame. And it goes way deep, just like your favorite horror film. It's already inside of each of us. And we need to identify it, call it by name, and move it to the side. That tribal shame, it doesn't exist. It doesn't need to happen today, right? So let's, let's go back in time. Right? Like every favorite boomerang video, like whoop, 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 right? To a time before the internet. What? <laughs> before iPhones. Never. <laughs> to a time before planes, trains, and automobiles, when we relied on our community for survival. It was our tribe. It was our community. Each person had a role to play. And if one of us stepped out of line and was rejected, it could literally mean death. That was not that long ago. We have not evolved past that. It is still in us. We are fearing rejection as if we might be put out. Oh, there goes Renee with another idea again. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. You want to do that? Hmm, interesting. I roll, inner mean girl. We do it to ourselves. We overwhelm ourselves and paralyze ourselves from taking action and moving forward, from deploying the one tool out of the armory that we know will win the war of resistance. And so it's time for us oh, to make a decision. It's time for us to make a decision. Today, you have a studio in your pocket. If you have an iPhone, you could literally wage a movement from your left arm in your pajamas on your grandmother's porch, as long as she has Wi-Fi. <laughs> there is no excuse, no reason for us to put that idea, that art, that creation that will make the world a better place. There is no reason for us not to deploy it and share it with the world. But we fear rejection. We fear it as if it will truly kill us. What if they don't like me? What if they say things about me? What if, and we get in our own head and it absolutely does us no good. The decision that we need to make is to decide, is this idea going to be put to light? And are we going to let it grow and see the people that truly need it? Or are we going to shut it in the closet and let it rattle the doorknob until our deathbed? Because it will. Because like me, it won't be quiet. Because like me, it does not want to be put away. Your idea, that thing, that spark, that thing you know will change the world, it 100% wants to be seen. It wants to see the light of day. And for you right now, all you have to say is, I decide not to worry about rejection. Because if I had worried about what they say, you guys know they say a lot. They say a lot of things that aren't nice. They are oftentimes in our own head. We don't even hear it because if I had listened to what they say, I would not be here today because I was too short, too thick, too New York, too loud, too much. But if I had listened to them, I would not be here today. And so be the Hessian soldier for your own ideas, for your own movements. There is absolutely no reason in today's modern age that that idea that was whispered in your ear like the muses from heaven above could not see the light of day with your passion behind it, included with indifference. Because passion and indifference are not mutually exclusive. You absolutely have it within you, no matter what that idea is. The next step <laughs> is to do it, to take action, because the earth needs you. <laughs>